What's going on you guys? Blessing here, aka the Boogie Man, aka the King of New York. And um, I just want to come on here real quick to set the record straight. There's some misinformation out there about Wrecking One dropping the Boogie Man, Wrecking One firing the Boogie Man. Not true, not one big true. What's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, Michael Crizzo posting a posing video on his YouTube channel, Crizzo Today, at two days out, filmed on October 6th. The show is October 8th that he'll be competing in this weekend, the Olympia Amateur in Italy. So I wanted to talk about this update because I think Crizzo looks a lot better here. I think he looks a lot rounder. I think he looks a lot fuller, and I think for that reason, it suggests that he has begun um, to carb load. It looks like he's filling out for the show now, whereas a lot of the recent updates that we had seen, I felt like he looked a little bit flat. I felt like he could have looked a little bit tighter, but in this update here, this is the Michael Crizzo that we're used to seeing. This is the Michael Crizzo um, that has kind of that freak factor, these crazy, ridiculously round, full arms, shoulders, chest, um, crazy 3D effect to his physique. And kind of in addition to that, and maybe as a result of filling up, he looks a lot harder here. He looks a lot denser. And I think this is a lot more uh, encouraging than some of the other updates that we had seen. And again, I, I really want to emphasize, I think that Crizzo with this amateur show is going to do just enough to win the overall. He's not going to do any more than he has to do. He doesn't want to expend any more of himself on this show than he needs to. He wants to save that energy, save that real actual peak for the Prog Pro at the end of the month. And then potentially, if he wins that show, focus on the Olympia. I really think he's going to earn this pro card here relatively easily. My opinion on that aspect of it hasn't really changed. I'm still getting the impression, even though he looks a lot better here, that he is saving the best version of himself um, for Prague, potentially the Olympia. And this, what we're going to see this weekend, I do not think will be his true peak. I think it will be a pretty good version of him, but I don't think it's going to be great. I don't think it's going to be the best, but I think it will be enough to win the overall. So do not be discouraged if we don't see like an insane version of Crizzo on this Olympia amateur stage this weekend. But let me know in the comments below how you think Crizzo is going to do with these upcoming shows. And either way, it seems like October is shaping up to be a pretty exciting month in the sport of bodybuilding. Like I said, you got two pro shows. One of them, you got James Hollingshead and Mark Hector. One of them, you've got the big return of Justin Rodriguez, Legion, and you've got the Tsunami Pro in Italy. Then you've also got the, Olymp the Olympia Amateur in Italy. So three shows this weekend. Make sure you subscribe um, for full coverage of those shows on this channel right here. Now, next up in the news, pretty big story here. Blessing Awodabu leaves Redcon 1. Blessing has been kind of the poster boy for Redcon 1 for, it seems like, many years now. So first he posted on his YouTube, and then he posted on his Instagram. So this was his post announcing his, uh, his leaving Redcon 1. He says, Redcon 1, what a journey. Thank you. From the moment I stepped in the door to ending the chapter, it's been an incredible ride. Thank you to Aaron for believing in me and taking a chance on me to live the American dream and grow in this sport and industry that I love so much. I will be forever grateful. Aaron and Redcon 1 will always be a large part of my story, but it's time to write the next chapter. And then in all bold caps, he has, FYI, I was not fired. I left. So effectively, this is the same thing he said on his uh, on his YouTube video, but he just kind of said it in longer video form. Um, he said basically, look, I wanted to uh, explore other opportunities. I went in their office. I requested to be let go, um, and they agreed. This was my choice. I was not fired, and, and people saying that I was fired is just not. It's not correct. It's misinformation. So I'm sure many of you may have seen the rumors going around that Blessing was fired from Redcon 1. Uh, I guess it was a couple days ago, maybe. I saw these rumors, and I asked some people that I know about it. I, now, I'm not affiliated with, Red, with Redcon 1 anymore, and that was also by choice. Um, but pretty quickly, I got the answer of no, that's not the case. He was not fired. He actually asked to be let go. Um, so I decided to wait to talk about that story until Blessing actually came with a statement of his own. Um, and that turned out to be what he said as well. That turned out to be what happened. Blessing wanted to be let out of that contract. And look, honestly, it wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense for them to fire him anyway, because th they did fire him the first time. They re-signed him after he started winning those pro shows. And I would imagine the main reason for signing him after he won was they realized there was some value 
in documenting his road to the Olympia. And there was some value in his potential high Olympia placing um, to make him an even more valuable asset to the company. Now that he's competing, now that he's winning, now that he's going to be on the Olympia stage, there's going to be a lot of press around blessing. So it wouldn't really have made sense for them to re-sign him, make this big public spectacle of him signing the contract, and then drop him before the Olympia, which would really probably be their biggest return on their investment would be the media around blessing that month and then during the show. Then there's also the fact they don't have James Hollings head anymore. I'm pretty sure um, that Kai Green's contract is ending soon from what I've heard. Kai is technically a pro, but right now, what active men's open bodybuilder does Redcon have? Blessing was really the only one that was actively competing that they had left, so it wouldn't have really made sense for them to get rid of him now. And also, I've met Blessing a couple times in, at the Redcon 1 gym for whatever Redcon events it was. Um, and when I was down there, Blessing is just like you see him on Instagram. He is diehard Redcon 1, reps it to the fullest. Um, and you can tell he really did love the brand. So whatever reason he decided to leave, maybe someone offered him a better deal. I find it really, really hard to believe that Redcon would have had any kind of bad blood or anything against him to let him go a second time, especially the way that he repped them when he was with them the first time. I was actually really surprised that they fired him in the first place the first time. But I'm sure Blessing will go on to probably find an even better deal. So best of luck to Blessing and wherever his path takes him. Now, next up in the news, I want to talk a little bit more about Urs Kalsinski. He has been really impressing me with the past couple of updates that he's done. He trained and posed with one of his biggest rivals, Terrence Ruffin, the other day. Then he posted basically a full physique update showing striated glutes, uh, pretty insane conditioning for 11 weeks out, really, I think, sending a pretty massive warning shot to the other classic physique competitors. And I got to believe that there was a lot of classic guys competing in the Olympia this year that saw those updates from Urs. And they were a little bit nervous, or probably a lot bit nervous. But now, most recently, on his Instagram story, he posted some training clips with none other than Chris Bumstead, the current classic physique Mr. Olympia. So he's doing all the right things right now. He's posting insane physique updates. He's training with all his rivals. He's filming a ton of content. I think this guy, I think he really does have the potential to be a huge star in classic physique. And I got to say, I don't think there's anybody in classic right now that's a top six classic guy that is in the same condition as Urs. And maybe that maybe that could be construed as not a, not a good thing. Maybe that means he's going to peak too soon. Or maybe it means he's absolutely peeled to the bone come the Olympia. Now, him training with Chris, I do think it's interesting. And of course, they don't have to. But I do think it's interesting Chris doesn't take his shirt off. He's not training in a tank top. He's not showing too much. And honestly, I wouldn't either if I were training around Urs and we were this close to the Olympia and Urs was looking the way he looks. I think that these other competitors are nervous about how good Urs is looking because he does look good. And I also wanted to point out that Urs is training arms here, and I think that's one of the biggest points that he's needed to improve. Again, a little bit a little bit easier to tell that he's added some size to his arms here, but still, you can't really get a full idea of how they're looking. Um, I think his arms and his back are the two things that if he brings those up, He's going to be extremely, extremely dangerous. He already is extremely dangerous. But I would say his arms look good here. And I would say it's cool to see him training with Chris. It's cool to see him training with Rough Diesel. And I think he's making all the right moves. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Where do you see Urs Kalsinski placing in the Olympia this year? Now, next up in the news, a physique update from William Bonac at 10 weeks out from the 2022 Mr. Olympia. It's crazy that we're already getting that close to the show. Um, showing his legs here, he says, we put a lot of time on this particular muscle group named legs, and I still have plenty of miles to go. Obviously, that was a point for him that he struggled with. He had that injury to his legs, and there was a little bit of an imbalance between the two. Here, they look pretty balanced. And last year at the Olympia, William Bonac was sixth place. In the past, he's been top three. He's been competitive in the top three. And I think people like to forget he was runner-up at the 2019 Mr. Olympia. William Bonac is dangerous. And we, we talk a lot about these new guys. Nick Walker, Hunter Labrada, where's Blessing going to land? Ian Valliere, uh, Andrew Jack. But I think a lot of people are writing off William Bonac as a guy that could crack that top three. I, I don't think he's going to be as low as six this year. I think at the same time as we're asking this question, which one of these new guys is going to move up? Can one of these new guys crack the top three? I think we also have to ask the question, how many of these new guys are going to be placing behind William Bonac this year because he moves up? Nick Walker was in his way in fifth place. Hunter Labrada was in his way in fourth. Hadi Chupin in third. I think William Bonac is one of the guys that could potentially crack that top three and push past a guy like Heidi Chupin. We forget that Bonac has beaten 
pretty much all these guys before. He's beaten Rami before. He's beaten Hottie before. He can do it again. And I think he is a guy that a lot of people are forgetting about that can really do some serious damage at the Olympia this year. And he's, I think he's getting lost in this shuffle of all these new names. There's so much good talent, new talent, fresh, fresh blood at the Olympia. And, and people are forgetting about some of the old guard that are still extremely competitive, like William Bonak. And he proved that at the Arnold Classic this year. Bonak is back. And then after the Arnold, he said he's getting his gyno fixed. His legs will be fixed. He will be better than ever. And I, I believe him. It's very rare that a bodybuilder gets up on stage after their victory speech at the Boston Pro, talks about their flaws, talks about how it bothers them, accepts their flaws and says, these are the things I'm going to work on. I hear you guys. I know this is a problem. I will have it fixed for the Olympia. I promise you guys. And I believe him. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you let me know what you guys thought about these stories in the comment section below. Make sure you leave a like on the video, a big thumbs up if you did, in fact, enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. Click that bell notification icon. And as always, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day. Dancing in the good light Everybody's feeling warm and bright It's such a fine and natural sight Every Dancing in the good light Everybody's feeling warm and bright It's such a fine and natural sight Everybody's dancing in the good light Everybody's dancing